You're watching the interview on France 24. I'm Philip Crowther in Washington. Today we're at the State Department for the first interview with a Obama administration official after the shock election of Donald Trump to the presidency. Our guest today is Ambassador Lee Woloski, President Obama's special envoy for Guantanamo. Thank you very much for joining us. It's a pleasure to be here. Ambassador, first of all, the job title, it's a special envoy for Guantanamo closure. Does that mean you'll be out of a job when the inauguration comes along? Um, are you going to keep this job? Well, I personally will um, uh, be moving on uh, and ending my term in office when the president ends his. Is that because of the incoming president, because it's Donald Trump and because he's spoken about potentially increasing the amount of prisoners uh, in Guantanamo? Uh, it is the way our system works. Uh, I came in to serve this president and um, as a political appointee and I'll, I'll be moving back to the private sector uh, once uh, his term is over. So what, what more can be done now, uh, between now and the start of a presidency that might bring some serious changes to the Guantanamo Bay prison. What can you possibly do now during this short time period to maybe even close the prison? Is that really still a, a realistic hope at this point? Well, we are uh, continuing with our policy. Our policy is to, uh, uh, to transfer out of U.S. custody the detainees that six agencies and departments of the United States government have concluded may be safely and responsibly transferred uh, out of our custody, subject to security assurances in the receiving countries uh, to which we transfer them. Um, we've uh, transferred uh, 178 detainees uh, in that manner during this administration. Uh, prior to this administration, the Bush administration transferred hundreds more. Uh, and uh, this is uh, a, uh, something that we will continue to do uh, through the end of the president's term in office. Uh, as the president said, uh, we think that there are uh, there is a remaining um, group of individuals at Guantanamo who are too dangerous to transfer out of our custody. Uh, some of them uh, are subject to criminal charges. Some of them are not subject to criminal charges, uh, but are still too dangerous to release from our custody. Let me mention again, though, what the, um, what the president-elect Donald Trump has said on the campaign trail. Uh, he said about the Guantanamo Bay prison that he might want to load it, load it up with bad dudes, is the quote from Donald Trump. Now, I won't ask you whether you think that'll happen, but are you, do you have contingency planning for that to happen? Uh, is Guantanamo ready to potentially increase its prison population? Well, I can't speak to the uh, policies of, of the incoming president-elect uh, and his administration. Right now, we have 60 detainees at Guantanamo. Uh, we have a guard force of approximately 2,000 members of the U.S. Armed Services. Uh, providing security there, and we're spending over $400 million per year. Uh, by the end of this administration, uh, we expect that the number will be closer to 45 or 50. So uh, back of the envelope, you're looking at spending approximately $10 million per detainee to house them uh, and to be guarded by 2,000 members of our armed services. So this is not uh, really an efficient uh, way to continue to uh, house individuals who uh, we think uh, are too dangerous to be released. It's why we have put forward alternatives that we believe are more cost effective, will enhance our security uh, by removing uh, Guantanamo, which has been a recruiting tool, uh, and which will be equally, if not more safe. Let's get back to your job title, sir. Special Envoy for Guantanamo closure. Doesn't look like it's going to happen. Got to ask you a straightforward question. Does that mean? You have failed, and the administration has failed in, in the goal that it had to close this prison? Well, I think we've been remarkably uh, successful in substantially reducing the detainee population. But the aim is closure. And substantially reducing the rate of reengagement uh, from uh, what existed in the prior administration. Um, uh, we have uh, unfortunately been subject to congressional restrictions that have stood in the way of uh, completing uh, aspects of the president's closure plan and bringing the remaining uh, group of individuals uh, to a secure facility in the United States. Uh, as the president said earlier this week, um, those restrictions have prevented him from closing the darn thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it's unfortunate uh, that the Congress has put in place uh, those restrictions because it is a completely inefficient uh, uh, process to keep 
uh, this prison going. You mentioned the president. He did say he hasn't managed to close this darn thing. He's clearly frustrated. You're frustrated. Uh, do you realistically see this prison closing at any point in the near future? Can you envisage that? Sure. How and when? Sure. I mean, it's uh, it, it, the the logic of closing it is quite clear. Uh, it is a completely it's it's out in the middle of the Caribbean. Uh, everything that um, needs to be brought there, food, um, medical care, um, uh, needs to be brought at great expense uh, to the U.S. taxpayer uh, to this offshore location. Uh, and uh, it just does not make any sense, really, to continue to maintain it. And I'm not even talking about the propaganda value. I'm just talking about the pure economics of running a facility way out there at the cost and at the inconvenience that uh, that is required. So I was there recently a, a few months ago and I, I spoke to the to the spokesperson of the prison and asked him whether they were not just preparing for potentially the closure of the whole prison but also maybe increasing making the prison bigger and increasing the prison population as has been promised by uh, President-elect Donald Trump. What kind of safeguards can you put in? You're a lawyer yourself. Mm -hmm. What can you do in terms of the law for this prison not to be made bigger in the future? Is there something you can do between now and the start of the next presidency to somehow make sure that doesn't happen? Well, as I said, what we're focused on doing is continuing to responsibly and safely reduce the prison population there of individuals who uh, in some cases have been held for 14 years in U.S. custody and in respect of whom the United States government has concluded unanimously, and this includes the joint staff, this includes the Department of Defense, this includes the intelligence community, that these individuals may be safely and responsibly transferred out of our custody. So that's what we're focused on uh, in, in the time that we have uh, remaining in this administration. Um, and uh, that's principally what I'm focused on, at least. Uh, and we can't control uh, what, um, what future administrations will do. And, uh, you know, the future uh, policies of pre the president-elect are going to be his policies. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, uh, we'll see what they, what they end up being. There might be another one, which might be interrogations uh, of uh, terrorist suspects uh, at Guantanamo Bay. Is that something that you can stop? at this point from happening? Well, we conduct inter interrogations now of, of, of our captures. Uh, you know, we do that on a case by case basis. What, what about potentially basis. new ones? Uh, well, again, when the new administration is in, they will have their policy. Um, you know, uh, uh, we're confident that our policy has been uh, uh, a policy that has safeguarded our security. I think the results speak for it themselves. Uh, it's no coincidence that it's used by our adversaries uh, when they uh, incite hatred against us. Uh, we all know that uh, ISIL parades prisoners to execution in orange jumpsuits, evocative of Guantanamo. There's still plenty of people out there who say that at Guantanamo at this point, there are human rights abuses going on right now. Is this the case? Uh, no. Um, the uh, facility at Guantanamo you visited is really a, um, uh, uh, it should be closed, but it's also a uh, state-of-the-art facility. Uh, the uh, health care uh, and um, uh, the conditions there uh, are uh, in accordance with um, uh, international U.S. law. You've mentioned that uh, the prison population will probably go down over the next two months, most likely. There are prisoners, though, who've been cleared for release. Um, one example, uh, let me mention this one to you, Ravil uh, Mingazov, um, the last remaining Russian citizen uh, at the prison. Uh, he was cleared for release in July, wants to be reunited with his family in England. Why are prisoners like him who've been cleared for release not back with their families yet? It's a good question. Um, you know, as soon as someone is approved for release and redesignated uh, by the six and These aren't prisoners who've done generally nothing wrong. Um, uh, there are individuals who the United States government has concluded that we no longer need to be detaining. Uh, and um, uh, unanimously concluded, as I said, all parts of our government. Um, 
that in it, that is one step of the process. Uh, the last step, obviously, is getting a country that is willing to take them in, uh, and um, uh, that is uh, sometimes a difficult uh, uh, process. What about in this specific case? I mean, we're looking at. We would in, support. In theory, this is supposed yeah. to be a transfer to the United Kingdom. What gets in the way of a release like that one? Uh, well, it, it is up to the United Kingdom. Uh, and frankly, if the United Kingdom were to agree to the family unification in this case, and we hope that they will, um, we would transfer uh, Mingazov to the United Kingdom. Um, we always support family uh, reunification where we can, uh, and this case is really no different. And before you leave your post here as a special envoy for Guantanamo closure, what's your personal assessment? I mean, this, uh, this prison, uh, this chapter in American history is seen as one of its darkest, at least uh, of the last decade. Yeah. Would you agree with that? Well, I mean, I, I'm, I sort of hearken to the words of uh, Senator McCain, who, when he was running for president, also supported the closure of Guantanamo. It was really a bipartisan imperative uh, until relatively recently. Uh, and McCain said something to the effect of, uh, it doesn't really matter what Guantanamo is, it's what it represents. Uh, and, and I believe that. Um, uh, Guantanamo, as it is currently run, uh, is run responsibly in accordance with applicable law. Uh, but that doesn't matter so much to our adversaries who are using its continued existence in order to recruit and to propagandize against the United States and our, and our allies. Uh, and if for that reason, if no others, uh, it should be closed. So thank you very much for your time. Much thank you. It's my pleasure. You've been watching the interview on France 24 with Ambassador Lee Woloski, uh, President Obama's special envoy for Guantanamo closure. Please do stay tuned to France 24. Plenty more news coming up.